morning. Good morning. And happy Sabbath. Happy Sabbath. Happy Saturday. <laughs> happy Saturday. Welcome to Revision Live. Welcome. I'm so excited to be hosting with you, Mike. Yeah. Knock it out again. Yes. <laughs> it's time to revive with, with Revision, Revision Live. Live. Drop in the chat, tell us where you are viewing from, what time of day it is. Let yes. us know. We want to know, how is the weather in your neck yes. of the woods? It's been real good lately. It has. Yes. You had a good week. Yeah, it's, it's beach weather for sure. Yes, nice yeah. little wind, nice mm -hmm. little breeze, you, you know? So we're loving the weather out here in Georgia. But we want to hear from you. Where are you listening from? Where you're tuned in? Drop it in the chat so we can shout you out. For all of our revisioneers yes. and those that are on their way, we have an amazing service today. Yes, I'm excited. Yes. We have revision kids coming later on today. So yes. bring the kiddos. So yes. We do want to start with some connection questions while you're driving. So it's already the first quarter of the year. Yes. We're in April, about to move into to May. Yes. So what are some of the goals that you had at the beginning of the year? Mm, that's good. Yeah, that's good. Honestly, I didn't really set too many goals. Okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I would just say that I just wanted to be as just open as possible mm. to whatever, just to be able to receive. Yeah. Instead of like, no, no, no. Hard time, yes, hard time right, goals. being so strict. Yeah, yeah. Just, just being open, you yeah. know, and yeah. maybe if new goals arrive, then, you know, take I love them that. as they come. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think for me, I did set some goals. Um, so I remember during New Year's, uh, right before the New Year's Eve, right, I set out 12, I wrote out 12 oh, wow. intentions for the year. Okay. And so these were very specific intentions, basically goals that I wanted to, you know, strive to just be more intentional this year. And so um, I actually reviewed them this morning. Okay. And um, I've you know, been making some progress. Good. So, yeah. Good. So it, it's been, but uh, you know, we're just saying, you know, even though it's the, we're in first into first quarter, you yeah. know, a lot of our year probably started off like slow, slow. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like it, it took us yeah. some time to really give 2024. Of course, a right? You gotta you know. dip your toe in a little bit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yes. And so now I feel like okay, now I'm ready to take action. Yeah. More. So your 12. Basically yes. goals where they you took to achieve one a month or it didn't have a timeline. Didn't yet. have a timeline okay. for me Go because ahead. I cannot be. But okay. I would say out of the 12, I at least hit at least half of the okay. so six of them. I at least I started checking off. That's I looked good. through all of like, wow, yeah. like I've really been making progress. Yes, so that's been exciting for me. Yes. 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 So you're moving back to the year. That's good. <laughs> yes. So let us know in the chat, what are some goals that you had yes. at the beginning of the year and where are you watching from? We yes, wanna we want to hear you. from you. What are some goals you had at the beginning of the year and that you, what are you doing? How is it going? Yeah. So that's the we real thing. Yeah, yeah, that's the real part. Yes. Robert says, happy Sabbath from Seattle. Oh, and beautiful Seattle. today. Yes, nice, Robert. Joy says, Sabbath blessings for your family. Sending love from Illinois. It's yes. sunny, beautiful, yet chilly. Oh, we love Joy. That's actually nice, though. Yes, we love that. Happy Sabbath from Saudi Arabia. Ooh, okay. okay. <laughs> yes, for Visioneer. We love that. I mean, yes. we are really international. Yeah. Like, that's amazing. You said the water, the weather is very hot. Very hot. I, I, I had that. Yeah. And I we're complaining know. it was hot today. Right. We don't know hot this week. We don't yeah. know that. Probably different. Candy, <laughs> hey, revision fam <laughs> from the media desk. Thank you. Every time. Yes, we love Thank it. You, Candy. Good Happy morning, Dominique. Happy Sabbath, revision family Ooh. from Montreal. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> love it. That's awesome. Well, thank you for sharing where you're where you're coming from. So what about your goals? What are some goals that you had at the beginning of the year? Yeah. Me, I wasn't specific. Yeah. about mine so you can be specific about yours yeah so what are some goals that you had at the beginning of the year yeah and so can you share some of if you don't want to get too personal some of the interests that you had yeah so well they were all kind of personal but <laughs> <laughs> but no one of them i did i i will share this one so i had a financial goal right okay. and i wanted to knock down some of my credit card debt okay this thing have some credit card debt. okay that's all right and i was able to pay off two credit cards yeah and so i was listen i was like lord right they were some high bills you know I mean? and so i was like at least i'm making two out of three amen right you know we're on the road to the third that credit square's going it's, it's yeah. 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 in new season 
but I was just happy to be able to do that. Yes. yes Joy. Yeah, she said less procrastination, more yes. productive rather than being busy. That's Come good. on, Joy. Because yeah. see, busy doesn't always mean you're productive. Right. And we right. get that confused. Right. We think mm -hmm. we're being productive because we're busy. And you no. just drain yourself in the end and you exactly. get exactly yes. good. Yeah. And less procrastination, because I am the queen. Oh. Of procrastination. I mean, the first it's, step is admitting that you have a problem. <laughs> it is like it's bad. Like yeah. <laughs> I will wait to the last minute. Yeah, yeah. The the paper is due at eleven fifty nine. At eleven fifty, you. <laughs> I feel like that's my best work. <laughs> Under pressure, Under pressure, right? But that's no way to live. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> no Very way to stressful. live. Yeah. <laughs> yes, yes. We want to hear from you. Or how are you progressing towards these goals? Right? Yes. Have you had to revise or pivot some goals? Because yeah. that happens. Yeah. Right? be life in y'all. Yeah, for real. And there are yeah. some things we just cannot control. You can't control. Mm -hmm. And so when, you know, things come and you're like, oh, I have this goal, but now I'm having to take a step back. Yes. How are you progressing or did you have to revise any? Because I think that's really good to give yourself grace yeah. as you are trying to achieve some of these goals. Yeah. And like I said, at the beginning, I said mine was more so open. To yeah, whatever I love that. So, I mean, it helps me because I'm a first type person. I write everything down to the T. Okay. At 12.50, you need to be doing this. At yeah. 1 o'clock, you oh, need to, to do this. Yes, okay. literally down to the very minute. Yeah. And if I don't get it done at that minute, now that I'm coming so controlling, yeah. you get stressed out, you get overwhelmed. Mm. So, yes, having That's that good. need to yeah. revising, need to revise your goals, I wouldn't yeah. be able to do that if I wasn't as open. Yeah. That is so important to be able to assess and be like, okay, well, I didn't want this, but I'm realizing mm -hmm. it actually is this instead. Yeah. It's, it's giving yourself grace. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. With the unexpected. Expected that happens because you never know yeah we don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow <laughs> yes love it love it let us know how are you progressing towards your goals or have you had to revise some of your goals or are you just now starting goals yeah. not, like i said we're yeah. just starting this is now we're going in the second quarter kenny said so goals working on expanding my career goals yes. making time for self-care and investing in more friendships and pursuing yes. courtship and marriage okay he loved that he got it boom, 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 boom. Boom. he got it sometimes you gotta get specific with yeah, the lord you do, okay and what you want to do what you need tanisha says that. more self-care learning a new sewing skill slash technique oh, and creating that. my own employment Definitely, that's the appointment. real goal. And I'm really loving how yes. like um, self care yes. is so big. Mental yes. health, self care. Love the I self love care. That. Yes, that should be one of our goals. Yes, steady progress, no revision as yet. That's all right. Come on. You know, it's the progress, the daily progress. That's yes. good. Progress. We're proud of you. Yes. Robert says legit what Kenny says. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Shout out Kenny Anderson. <laughs> Plus. You're saying 10 toes down on my nose. No okay. toes myself first and then others. That's good. That's good, right? Yes. So that was actually one of mine. Uh -huh. Saying so you letting my right. yes be my yes and my no be my okay, no. Good. And yeah. being intentional with that. That's good. And so there are times where I have to tell people no. Yeah. But he yeah. said yeah. Di um, disciplining himself, telling himself Discipline. no first yes. and yes. then telling others. That's yeah. really good. That's yeah. hard. Lydia says, my goals of the year and to, are to start a business. Yes, read more books, books and finish reading the Bible this year. I'm I with love you. that, Lydia. I'm yes. with you. Yes. 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 We actually, later on, and we'll talk about it, we have a ministry spotlight of yes. Bible study. So if you're interested, Lydia, stay tuned. That's awesome. Well, as you guys are continue to just reflect on those questions, we definitely want to hear from you. Now we're going to go and pivot into what's happening yes. here at Revision. We have an amazing uh, Sabbath, and we also have some uh, great events that are coming up. Mm -hmm. So May 18th, we are celebrating our graduates. We've made this announcement. But we want to uh, say again that May 18th, we are going to be celebrating our graduates. So whether you've graduated from high school, mm -hmm. college, um, secondary education, kindergarten, <laughs> fifth grade, sixth grade, yeah. we want you here. So you want to scan the QRR code, take a quick survey, and be here on the uh, that Sabbath on May 18th. And then we'll also be doing some photos as well. Yes. Um, the photos will be taken today, April 20th. Nice. And so if you're here in the church and you're going to be a graduate, we ask you to um, stay so that you can take your graduation picture because yes. we want to celebrate our graduates. Yes, you don't yes. have to bring your cap and gown. <laughs> yes, you don't have to do it. <laughs> Just want you but if you want to, hey. Right, yeah. <laughs> we won't tell you no. <laughs> yes. Also today after church, we have Beat the Buzzer. So it's really exciting, something engaging for our youth. We're going to be doing it today after church. It's a face-off, a challenge. Yes. Today after church from 7 p.m. to 10 p.m. We also wanted to talk about, we have a baptism coming up today as well. 
So come in, tune in. We love getting to know the people. We love people that are giving their lives and taking that step in their Christ and in their, their walk with Christ. So we do want to talk about we have a ministry spotlight. And so we're going to welcome in the New Start Ministry Leader, Mr. Jerry Hill. Hello. Hello. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm glad today? to be here. Doing good. great. Doing great. Glad to be here. So we wanted to just ask you some questions about your ministry. Okay. So tell us about your ministry and what exactly your team does. Okay. Our ministry, uh, what you would say is the backbone, uh, actually what uh, the Revision Church ministry is. I love that. We, we are the ones when people uh, sign up for baptism. Right. Uh, they they come to us if okay. people want bible study they come to us we're the one who will give that to them we we are the ones who take that spot that the pastoral ministry give them yeah. when when they hear the message yeah and, and we we whip that and we hopefully whip that into a flame right where, where the where they want to grow in their relationship with god that's good yeah that's that is amazing. what we do Yes, it's yes. like yeah, and I love how you say it's the backbone because you do right. need that solid foundation of the yeah. Bible studies of knowing the steps and what you want to do once you commit your life and say that you want to walk with Christ. Right, right. Yes. yes. What we do is we 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 share with them the the plan that God has, right? The problem and the promise and how how Jesus Christ fit in all of that. Good, that's yeah, good. it is it is great for for. Uh, people to know that because a lot of people don't know that yeah and so yeah and i get excited about it just yeah. just, just the opportunity for me to share with others what the holy spirit has been teaching me and that's good and i love how you talked yeah. about you know the promise that he has and how god implements and all of that because we can really mm -hmm. use that in our daily lives i yes. think a lot of times we look for the the end promise but mm -hmm. with your teachings right. and the community with you they can use it when they go to daily struggles and things like that so i really Amen. love that yes Amen. yes okay yes. so how can someone get involved in your ministry that is that is a, a good person when when you fill out uh when, when you click on that qr code on on your phone and, and you fill out that information it comes to me. Okay. Okay. And, and so if, if you want to get involved, what you do is you can fill out that information. Right. I'll get it. Okay. Or you can uh, go, go on our website, click on the menu where it says serve, mm -hmm. click on that. It, it gives you information that, that, that you need to fill out. At the bottom is a box that says, where do you want to serve? Nice. And you type in new start ministry. Yeah. That's it. The other way is, uh, when we're in person, you can come and contact Pastor uh, Tiffany Brown or myself and say, hey, I'm excited. I want to get involved in, yeah. in the ministry. Or the other uh, way to do it is to just to text me. And my number is 404-353-0822. Yeah. Say that again. 404-353-0822. Right. <laughs> text me and say, I want to get involved. And, and reach out to them. I will reach out to them. Yeah. And I, uh, uh, let me just say this though: we're looking for fat people. Fat <laughs> is a, fat is that uh, is an acronym for faithful, yes. available, yes. and teachable. Yeah. So if you are faithful, available, and teachable, yes. Come on to me. He said it again. We're looking for fat people. Fat okay. People. Faithful. Fat people. Available and teachable. I right. love that. Right. Right. Yes. That's, so what that's we're fixing for. your hair. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And how can our online viewers be a part of your uh, ministry? Yeah, they definitely can be a part. The same way, just uh, doing the QR code, mm -hmm. uh, text me, or, or text me and let me know that you want to be a vibe, and I will reach out to you. Definitely will. I know you talked about for your Bible studies. They're mm -hmm. there on Zoom, on, on call, so it's perfect for the online viewers. So right, you don't have to be right. Person. Yeah. Yes, yes, that is true. Yeah, it's on, uh, the majority of them right now are on Zoom. Okay. We, we hopefully get it, want to get it where they're in person, but right now we're on Zoom. So if you're online, we uh, we, we can use you. Okay, I know you said that you love to talk to people and you know tell them about Christ. Mm -hmm. What got you into that? What got you into wanting to be a part of the New Start Ministry in the first place? Ah, do do we have enough time? We, we have we have time. <laughs> okay, okay. I became a, I became a believer at the university uh, at, at Tuskegee University right. through through an organization. Right. <laughs> okay. Through an organization called uh, 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 the uh, Navigator. Okay. And, and their their main mission is to know Christ and to make him known. Mm -hmm. 
uh, when I became a believer, they immediately got me in the Bible study. Mm -hmm. I mean, immediately. Yeah. And that hunger was placed in me by the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And as I experienced that, and, I, and, and they encouraged me to begin to share that yeah. with other other people around me. Mm -hmm. Man, and when I experienced that, I was feeling like no other. Yeah, right. yeah, 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 yeah. I was hooked. And you're right. It's a feeling like no other. And you you teach them, but you you get so much out of it, yeah. your own self. Yeah. Spiritual growth, man, it's, it's amazing. You get so much spiritual growth. So that's why I always encourage people. Uh, it's good to know God. Yeah. And it's good to share him with, with other people. Yeah. As the Holy Spirit opened doors, and He will open doors for you if you want it. Right. He'll open doors for you, and as He opened doors, walk through it. Yeah, that's yeah. what you have to do. That's it. That's it. Well, thank you, Jerry. I do appreciate you. Well, all so, right, I am glad to be here. We yeah, do have Mr. Chair. Jerry here from our New Star Ministry. Thank you. <laughs> Oh, and if you don't, that's okay. It is National Stress Awareness Month. So April is recognized as National Stress Awareness Month, and we want to bring attention to the negative impacts on stress, on managing and controlling our emotions, our mental health, to help with our lifestyle. Because honestly, as we know, health is the true wealth. Okay. And stress, <laughs> stress just takes that away. It really does. So good to know how stress impacts you. So mm -hmm. did you know that 77% of adults regularly experience physical symptoms wow. and 73% have psychological system, sy symptoms caused by stress? Yeah, that is deep. Yeah, and it, it makes sense. Yeah, because I feel like the older you get and what we're transitioning as, yeah. you know, young adults in adulthood, yeah. like, I feel the stress. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I do be feeling it. Yeah, <laughs> I feel it now. I now understand what my mama was Tired all the yeah, time. all the time. All the time. I'm like, why are you always tired? Right. And she will always say, just keep on living. Mm -hmm. And now I, I, I have, I'm living. Yeah, you live. I'm living you it. You felt it, right? I'm living <laughs> in it. Yes. And you don't know how stress can really affect you. It can yes. affect, like I said, your physical health. As in, you can be, you can have hypertension just yes. because of stress. It can mess with yes. your cortisol level. Yes. It can mess with your circadian rhythm where you can't mm -hmm. go to sleep. So yeah, it's very, it's very urgent. That we yeah. need to monitor and be aware of the things that cause it. Yeah. So what are some of your symptoms of mm. stress? If That's you good. notice them, what are some things that you notice when you do get stressed? This out? is good. Some symptoms of stress. Okay, yeah. so what are some of yours? So mine, I mean, as a mom, uh -huh. I get I get overstimulated sometimes. Yeah. Yeah. And I know that I'm stressed out is when there's music playing in the background or TV in the background, and I'm like, uh-uh, no, turn it off. Like it's just like uh, it's becoming too much. Now. Yes, it's becoming okay. too much. And I'm like, okay, yeah. I'm stressed out. Let me go ahead and calm mm -hmm. down. Or if I get quiet, and sometimes I start, I start humming to try mm -hmm. to calm myself down. Yeah. Like yeah. I start singing a song, humming it to try to yeah. calm myself down, and mm -hmm. I'm not even realizing with my subconscious, like mm -hmm. you're overworked right now. Yeah. Take a break, relax. Yeah, yeah, settle yeah. it on down. Yeah, Def heavy on the quiet. Yeah. I because I'm not naturally a quiet person. Right. So if I'm quiet, something yeah, is going wrong. wrong. Right. <laughs> I'm in my head. I'm in my head. Yeah. And one of mine is so funny. I get, I break out. My skin oh. will start to break out. Ooh, yeah. Wow. Yeah. And I realize like it is stress. I'll yeah. get some pimples mm -hmm. and I just realize, okay, I'm feeling very dehydrated yeah. too. Like my, every, my, just my energy is very low yeah. and I'm not recognizing like I have a lot of things on my plate and in my head mm -hmm. and I'm not creating that self-care yeah. that we talked about. Yeah. Right. Which yeah. is so important. Yes. yes. Yeah. So what are some of your symptoms of stress? We just shared some of ours. Yes. Symptoms of stress. And it's good to be able to identify. It so is. It's like when you know that you are slowly itching mm -hmm. onto it, you can take a step back. Tanisha said panic attack. Woo, My Lord. Lord. It's straight there. Straight. Right. No symptoms. That's it. <laughs> Whoa. We are, we're praying for yeah, you. Yeah, right? we're praying for you. <laughs> panic attacks are real. Yeah, that's serious. Tension in my body, shortness of breath. Oh, yes. Yes. The yes. tension. Yeah. Like you don't realize how much stress you, you hold in your, your body. shoulders and everything. Yes. Kenny says my back gets tense. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yes. A, a, a health tip. Right. If you have not, seek a chiropractor. 
Okay. So one of the things I did, I started last year, was going to a chiropractor. Okay. And that has helped my stress management a lot. Yeah. Like, because there was so much stress in my back. Yeah. And I just had, like, when I would get an adjustment, it literally, I felt, like, lighter. Yeah. Yeah. And I felt the, the stress from my back. Release. Yes, release. So yes. we all want to know, what about that neck crack? Because anytime I see the video, the neck crack is not that okay. bad. Okay. Yes. It's really, because I was, I was scared. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but my cousin is, he is a chiropractor in Buckhead okay. for those in Atlanta. Okay. <laughs> practice out. And it's not as bad. And I'm a scary cat. Okay. Scary cat. So, yeah, no, it's not. <laughs> Rita says neck, neck and back senses. See, yeah. a lot of us, mm -hmm. you can feel the stress in your body. Yeah. Yeah, you feel it in your body. So now that we notified or identified some yeah. of the symptoms, what are some ways that you manage stress? Mm, Especially good. with those stress you said us about a chiropractor, yeah. getting massages, maybe massages, taking a nice yes. bath, you know. A nice bath yeah. with some candles. Yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> yeah, so we want to hear from you. What are some ways you are managing stress what is the way i literally have to take myself out of the situation altogether mm. so if i start to get stressed that. in the kitchen i need to go to the bedroom i need to go okay. outside i need yep. to just literally remove myself yeah and i don't know maybe it's just me but it's like when i get stressed it's like a smell to me it's like connected to a sensory and it's like wow. i need to go smell something else maybe i need to smell yeah. some incense oh you know and that's why people have a lot of those like the, the like yeah candles or incense because oh, aromatherapy yeah aromatherapy yes, yeah like yes, peppermint yes. and stuff like that mm -hmm. because it really does I think you lavender mm -hmm. eucalyptus oil that's yes. my go-to mm -hmm. that helps up that's my stress reliever i will get the lotion yeah right. <laughs> i remember and i used to joke with my mother i'm like why you always got this bath of body work <laughs> eucalyptus right <laughs> But it really does help aromatherapy <laughs> work. Stressed her out. <laughs> My mom out, and now I'm stressed. Right. That's your karma. <laughs> it is. It is. So, what are some ways you are managing stress? We want to hear from you. Um, another thing that I do is going on walks. Yeah. That's yeah. Good. So now that we're in the season of walking, yes. um, like to be able to go on walks. Yes. Yes. Okay. Stacy says working out, okay. regular medication, and a lot of prayer time. Yes. That's the, the trilogy prayer. right and, there. And honestly, <laughs> okay. Prayer should be the first thing that we yes. do. Yes. Dominique, angry yeah, at myself and questioning God. And you know, and Ooh. I love the honesty because Come it does on. get like that. Because sometimes we got to get that first, you know, anger yeah. out. Yeah. Right, right. And especially if I Release. get stressed and I do an outburst, it's like you could have calmed your stress way before you got to that mm -hmm. point. So now you're angry at yourself. That's that's so honest. Thank you. Kenny said, I manage stress by choosing joy. Come on. As long as hot baths and help too. So yes, yes. <laughs> yes you got to choose, choose joy. Yeah. yeah. Choose it. I love that. Work and music helps me. Yes. Mm. Thank you, Norda. Yeah. Norita, sorry. <laughs> When Wendy, he says exercise, exercise. yes, hey, we talked about we getting need, active. We will be getting active. active is one of the ways to really help manage your stress, yeah. right? So whether it's in a rigorous workout routine or just going on a walk yeah. or just like bike riding, just getting yeah. that fresh air, yeah, really just help. releasing. Tanisha says, "I clean. Quiet oh. time in the toilet, laundry, cleaning. Oh. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Cleaning makes actually me stress. <laughs> I'm sorry. That not that I'm not a dirty person." No. It just seems a lot of work sometimes yeah. for me. <laughs> but for you, yes. <laughs> so we do want to discuss some things. Okay, we have Dominique singing and specifically counting God's blessing. Yes, yes. Dominique. Showing that gratefulness of what you do have. Yes. Helps. Thank <laughs> Love you. that. So we want to talk about ways to manage stress. So we have the five A's that we should utilize. So mm -hmm. tell us more about the five A's. So about. the five A's we have avoid, alter, adapt, accept, and get active. And so we kind of talked about some of these already, yeah. right? When we said, hey, um, I think Kenny said, I want to choose joy, right? So right. he's saying, I'm yeah. avoiding it. Yeah. He's like, I'm just going to, before it, I let it stress me out, yeah. let me choose joy. Yeah. And that is a, a great way yeah. to man help try to manage stress by like actively going in before you allow it to have this like, Consuming. yeah, this yeah. reaction and say, hey, I'm gonna respond yeah. in joy. And I think that's really good for mm -hmm. us to know. And then it says alter, right? So stress can be caused by different situations and it and it's addressed in maybe in your daily routine. Right. So you need yeah. to start looking at, okay, what, what is stressing yeah, me out? Reevaluate. Yeah. Yes, reevaluate. Mm -hmm. If it is that, you know, you know, meeting that something that, that you, morning drop offs with right, the kids, you dinner, gotta, yeah. you know, reevaluate, right? And then learning how to adapt, right? Yes. 
you know, mm -hmm. I always say expect the unexpected. Right, and literally. so now you have to be, you know, um, I think one of the viewers, um, I remember said, you know, they choose, you know, to sing, yes. listen to music, mm -hmm. doing things that can literally calm them down yes. and allow them to adapt and realize, hey, I can't change the circumstance, yeah. but I can also, exactly. but I have control of how I respond to it, yes. not how I let it affect me. Yes, we need to right. show us um, exactly yes. how to do that. We yes, yes. And then we said accepts, right? So sometimes we have to accept the situation, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. And and it is sometimes it is hard, yeah. right? But in other ways, you can be able to um, be able just to uh, uh, while you're adapting, accepting to it, yeah. so that you can process it in a healthy way, yeah. right? And when you accept it, you're releasing it. So you're you're releasing it. Yes. the need to control it. Yes, just literally letting go and letting God. Letting Accepting go and letting it. God. That's a good mm -hmm. one. Yes. And then the last one we talked about was active. Yes. So like I said, getting in some exercise, getting into your walks, you know, whether it's doing um, even just brain activity, they say yeah. it helps with your cognitive brain, like it's activity good. by like um, maybe doing like a word puzzle oh, or nice. anything like that, that will help you um, to just release some of that. Some people good. can do coloring now. Yeah, I've been color I have a coloring book. I've, that. I've yes. been doing mm -hmm. that. So those are just different ways. That's yeah. right. I love so that. So what are some signs of stress that we can talk about um, that you would like to talk about. So we do want to talk about some signs in all our adults and our men specifically as well. Mm, that's good. Yeah, because we don't we don't always acknowledge that. We don't be acknowledging. Right. So, we need to though. So sometimes yeah. <laughs> it's difficulty breathing. I mm. think I someone did say something about um not being able to yeah, breathe. That's shortness, of breath. shortness of breath. Yeah. yeah. Panic attacks. We did talk about mm. that. Blurred eyesight. Oh that wow. Is so scary. Yeah, yeah that, that is. That's being so stressed can literally yeah, can make you blind temporarily or permanently. Mm. Sleep problems. Like I said, it's messing with your rhythm, your yeah. routine of going to sleep. You're staying up to two o'clock. Yeah, yeah. Insomnia. Yeah. A fatigue. You're just tired all the time. Even when you rest for six to eight hours, mm -hmm. you're still tired. Yeah. Uh, muscle aches and headaches. Headaches are a big one. Yeah. Headaches. Yes. My, the migraines. Yes. The migraines. Oh, yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Chest pains and high blood pressure can be caused and indigestion and heartburn. So when you're closer, you know, about to go to bed and you keep getting that feeling, that burning, yeah. feeling, that uncomfortable feeling, that could be a symptom of stress. Mm. We also want to discuss some stress sometimes in infants and toddlers and young oh, adults. Oh, good. Yes, because so they get don't all recognize that. We don't pay attention hey. to the baby. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. <laughs> but they can't vocalize, hey, mommy, I'm stressed right yeah, now. Yeah, they can't. So sometimes yeah. it's clinging to their caregivers a little bit more. Mm. But maybe they want to hold on to you. Yeah. Maybe they're crying a bit more, regressing to former or their younger behavior. So wow. maybe they start peeing on themselves when they're already potty trained. Oh. And that's maybe like a wake up sign. Hey, something, yeah, something is going wow. on with them. Mm. Changes in their sleeping and eating patterns. They stop eating as much. Yeah. Maybe, yes, they might be eating more, but mm -hmm. there is a, 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 a medium on how much they should be eating still. So mm. if they're going to a great amount and they're eating until they throw up, which my daughter will do sometimes. Uh -oh. She'll literally eat till she throws up. Yeah. That might be something to monitor. Wow. Higher irritability could be increased hyperactivity. Mm. So maybe they're just moving a lot more. They can't sit down. They can't um sit and wait. And, you know, a lot of times they start to diagnose them with ADHD for stuff like that. Mm. And it could be maybe they're just stressed. Maybe they need some more one-on-one -on -one time. Yeah. And they're more afraid of certain things. Or they're more demanding and they cry more frequently. Mm. So these are certain things that can happen in your toddlers. I mean, it's yeah. a part of their growth as well. So you know your child. Monitor them. Yeah. See certain things. But these are some things to, to pay attention to. Love that. Well, we hope that this was, you know, bringing awareness as yes. far as far as stress awareness. And we pray that you guys are taking the steps to be able to care for yourself, to manage your stress in healthy yes. ways and then be able to um, identify those uh, stressors as well. And so yes. we appreciate you guys tuning in to Live at Revision. Yes. We're going to get ready for our live worship experience. Yes. We hope that you feel revived, revived renewed, renewed and refreshed. refreshed.
welcome to church. We gather to worship an amazing God who created the heavens, the earth, all that lives, crucified, buried, risen, holy. Jesus is good. Jesus is forever. You are loved. You are accepted. You belong. Welcome to Revision Church. Happy Sabbath, Revision. How are we today? Are y'all blessed? There's a song called Open the Eyes of My Heart. And we, we just want to ask God to open the eyes of our hearts, right? So we can see like him, so we can move like him, so we can love how he called us to love, right? So we're going to sing this song just to open up here. Feel free to join in as we give God praise.
for my family. I wanna see. I wanna see. For my finances, I wanna see. I wanna see. For my relationships, I wanna see. I wanna see. For my health, I wanna see. I wanna see. For my marriage, I wanna see. I wanna see. For my children, I wanna see. For my family, I wanna see more. Do you wanna see him? Said I wanna see more. Oh, I wanna see. Right there in your seat, say I wanna see more. I wanna see more. Said I. Good morning, Revision Church Atlanta. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Yes, welcome. We are so glad that you decided to join us today. Yep, it's good to be in the house of the Lord. Those of you who are online joining us all around the world, all across this country, we're glad that you are here. Revision Church Atlanta, we see you in the chat, many of our yes. revisioneers. Yes. Yeah. Welcome to Rita, Tanisha, and all of the rest of you all yeah. visiting with us virtually and in person. That's right. That's right. We're glad as we have gathered on this great day, this beautiful day here in Atlanta. Mm -hmm. we're, uh, we're up for a good time in the Lord. Yes. We got a great preacher in the house. Yeah. So what's making this such a great day for you? I see something on you. Well, I get to sit and be blessed. Yes. All yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Instead all of right. pouring out, I'm going to be poured in too. Oh, that's a good sign. Yeah. Yeah. So right. I'm, I'm looking forward to it. We'll announce, we'll uh, introduce or reintroduce, we should say, our guest preacher today and his lovely wife in just a little bit. But would you just turn to your neighbor and say, it's good to see you today. I want, come on, come on. It's good to see you. Give me a little something, uh, David. Give me a little something up, up, up under. Just a yeah. uh, little music, a little greeting music. Turn to the person behind you and uh, say, hey, it's good to see you too. It's good to see you too. <laughs> People on the back row just wave at the media team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's good to see y'all. We appreciate you being here. And for those of you who are online, it's a blessing. Yes. Uh, today, as we've come to this worship experience, um, we know that whenever the people of God gather together, it's uh, always a great time for us to pray because the promise is where two or three are gathered yes. in his name, that he is in the midst, and that when we come together and agree on stuff, God moves in a powerful way. Yes. And so as we get ready to pray, for those of you who are online, would you just drop your prayer requests in the chat? so that we might be able to partner with you in prayer. Even now, just drop that in the chat for those of you who are here. Is there anybody here who's standing in the need of prayer, something you're praying for, something yes, you need Lord. God to do, yes, a way Lord. that God needs to make yes. a way out of no way? Would you just stand with me if you raised your hand? In fact, everybody in the building, let's just stand. Even if you didn't raise your hand, you may not know that you're standing in the need of prayer. Amen. Um, but as we are in this place, we reverence the fact that God's presence is here. And we believe that great things are going to happen because we serve a great and awesome God. And today, for those of you who are online, know that the same spirit that is filling this place is filling your place where you are. Thank you, Lord. That as we touch and agree, even through and in this virtual sanctuary, the miracles, the blessings, the deliverance that God will do for those here, he will do for you right where you are. I'm going to ask our First Lady, Minister Stephanie Knight, to pray for us to lead us in prayer on this morning. We thank you, Lord. How many of you all sense the move of God even now? Yes. You, you anticipate what God is already doing. Sometimes in prayer we're asking God 
to do a new thing when we really need to ask God to remove the scales off of our eyes that we might see what he's already doing and what he's already done. Oh God, we love you this morning and we exalt your high and holy name. We bask in your glory and in your goodness. We exalt you because you are the most high God. There is none like you. You are holy, you are altogether good and powerful. Ah, you are worthy of the praise even now, God. Oh, we offer our lives and our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto thee. God, do a new thing in our lives. Ah, God, we're asking that you revive and you restore and you renew our strength. Lord, many of us come to church out of habit, but we're so glad you can even use a habit to do a new thing in our lives. Ah, God, we see that you want to move because you have the power to save. Ah, save those who know their loss and those who won't even acknowledge their state of lostness. God, we thank you that you have promised a better day after a while. Lord, there are many brothers and sisters here and who are watching virtually who have had great loss. 2024 has been something else already, God. There's been so much death, disease, and dying that if we aren't careful, we could lose our faith. We could lose our hope. But today we see the light at the end of the tunnel, God. Today we declare that you are going to do a new thing. We look forward to the day when you will wipe away all tears from our eyes, when you will set the record straight, where you will clear our names, where you will be glorified, where you will give us beauty for ashes. Our God, we wait on you with anticipation. We know you are able. We thank you, Lord, for the day where you will silence the gossipers. Our God, and we look forward to the day where you will free those who have been witnesses to your goodness, that they might be unmuted and they will speak of your glory and your goodness. You are the all-wise God, and we ask that as we are in your presence today, that you will reveal to us what we need in our innermost spirit, that we will leave here better than we came. Bless the word as it goes forth today. Bless Pastor Calazar as he preaches the word. Bless his wife, Carlene. Bless their daughters, Amber and Caitlin. God, renew their strength, lighten their burden as they minister for the call of God. Help us to stand in the gap for our brothers and sisters all over the world who are proclaiming the good news of Jesus. Oh God, we love you this morning and we thank you for the forgiveness of sins. We thank you for your righteousness that covers us. And Lord, we anticipate your healing touch and the revelation you have for our lives to this world. We love you, God, and we thank you for loving us first and loving us best. In the mighty name of Jesus, amen, amen. Amen, amen. If you believe God, just put your hands together. God has heard us. God has heard us. We praise God. Praise the Lord. You may be seated all over this sanctuary. And once again, we're grateful that we are all here today. Our church continues to grow, not only uh, spiritually, not only in our faith, not only in our impact to the community, but numerically. We got new members joining today. So uh, Jessica, our a wonderful clerk, is going to come and give us our second reading. Thank you, First Lady. Thank you, Jessica. Good morning, Revision. This is the second reading, April 20th, 2024. Transferring from Revision to Peachtree Hills SDA Church in Noonan, Georgia. Keith Fowler II. Transferring into Revision from Augusta First SDA Church in Augusta, Georgia. Sheldon Blair. From Emmanuel Brinklow SDA Church in Ashton, Maryland. Charles Reynolds II. From Elim French Haitian SDA Church in Naples, Florida, Kimberly Harrard. From Corona SDA Church in Corona, New York, Doreen Antoine. And by profession of faith, Stacy Piper. Amen. Thank you so much, Jessica. Um, for those of you, if we called your name, I know a couple of them are here. We called your name just a minute ago. Just stand so we can recognize you, Charles. I know you're over here. Do we see stay? All right. Good to see you. Good to welcome you. Good to welcome you. Come on, church. 
God bless you. Yeah, we welcome you. All right, church, so as is our custom, is there a motion that we accept these brothers and sisters into the full fellowship of Revision Church Atlanta? Do I hear a motion? Is there a second? All right, ready for the question. All those in favor, say amen. amen. All right, it is Carrie. Come on, let's put our hands together. Praise God. for Those of you who are around, our newest members, give them a handshake, a holy hug. Let them know you're glad to see them today. Welcome to Revision Church Atlanta. We're grateful that you are here and that you are members. And uh, we continue to grow. For those of you who've already signed up, you said, listen, I want to be a member of Revision Church Atlanta. It's been a month. It's been two months. H hold on. Hang in there. We're just trying to make sure that we accommodate um, the process because wherever your membership is coming from, they got to get to it and vote it. Uh, over here and then we voted in so uh, we'll continue to let you know how that process is coming and we're grateful for you well at this time we're going to uh, get ready to celebrate my wife was asking me why am I happy not just because I get to be preached to today minister to but also because church we get to celebrate something that is so exciting in the life of any church and that is, we've got folks for baptism today. All right, all right. Let me say that again so we really do it. We got folks for baptism today. Come on. The Bible says all of heaven rejoices. And so we're joining in the party with heaven. And so we're going to ask our wonderful baptismal candidates today to come. Would you just stand right here? in front of me and just face the church. Listen, your family's right there. Don't be nervous. All right, listen, we love you already. Just stand right here in the center. Come on, encourage them while they come. And so today, coming for baptism, we have Imani Belavoir. Yes, yes, yes. And then also today, we have Chloe and Payden Rozier. Come on. Grateful for you. We are so excited for you, these precious young people who are joining our church, making their public declaration of their love for Jesus Christ. And so today, and so today, we will do, as we often do, is our tradition is there a motion that we accept these subject to baptism that will immediately follow into the membership of Revision Church Atlanta? Such a motion. Is there a second? All right, ready for the question. All those in favor, say amen. 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 Let's put our hands together as they get ready to go to the pool. We'll lead them this way. Go to your right. All right, Pastors Houston and Pastor uh, Tiffany uh, Brown is ready to receive you as we get ready to go through their baptism. Listen, families and friends of those who are coming for baptism, um, we want you to stand whenever your folks are in the pool and all of our ministry leaders and staff at the church, you know what to do. We're gonna stand in solidarity and support of those who are being baptized today. All right, and in just a moment, uh, we're going to do it in this order. We'll have Imani, and I think media team has this. We'll have Imani first, and then we'll have Payden. I'm sorry, then Chloe, and then Payden. And today, uh, as they get ready to, yes, we'll have Imani first. One of the things that we like to do is share with you their favorite scripture. Favorite scripture uh, for Imani, her favorite, uh, favorite scripture is, It is good to praise the Lord. And make music to your name, O Most High God, Psalm 92.1. So we've got a praiser in the house today. All of the friends and family of Imani Belavoir, would you please stand? Ministry leaders and team members, let's stand. We praise God for you, Imani. Because of your love for Jesus and your faith in his power to save, it is now our privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, 
the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Be faithful until he comes. Come on, come on, church. Let her hear you. Amen, amen. Grateful for you, grateful for you today. We praise God for Imani. Congratulations, Belavoir family, all the loved ones who are here today to celebrate. And then, and then today we have a wonderful family. It's part of our church family, the Rozier family. They've got Peyton and we've got Chloe today. We're going to do one by one? All right. All right. So, Peyton, uh, so Chloe first. Chloe will come. Family and friends of Chloe, well-wishers, those who support, please stand. Amen. Amen. We're so grateful today. Chloe's favorite scripture comes from 2 Chronicles 15, 7. But as for you, be strong and do not give up, for your work will be rewarded. And we praise God today that you are trusting in the powerful work of God on your behalf today because of your faith in Jesus and your power and his power to save you. It is our privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the name of the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Be faithful until he comes. Yeah, 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 yeah. Congratulations, Chloe. We're grateful for you today. And then from the same family, listen, we've got we got family. We got family here today. The Rosiers are strong here today. All right, we're grateful as Peyton comes and will follow in baptism. Peyton's favorite text comes from 1 Timothy 4.12. Do not let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech, in conduct, in love, in faith, and in purity. Come on, church. I love that. I love that, Peyton. And so, Peyton, because of your faith in Jesus and his power to save, it is now our privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Be faithful until he comes. Amen, amen. We got him down and we got him back up. Come on. <laughs> We praise God. We praise the Lord. Come on, church. Let's celebrate. Let's celebrate. All those, these young people have been baptized today. Let all of heaven hear as we celebrate what God has done. We thank God today. And for those of you who have been thinking about, those of you who've been pondering, the Spirit's been working on you about giving your life to Jesus in this public way. The Bible says all you have to do is believe in Jesus Christ and his power to save you. And let the Spirit of God do the work of change in you. And you can be in the next baptism. Today at the end of service we'll make an appeal and you can be able to answer that appeal today so you can be in the next baptism. Amen, church. Amen, amen. I believe now we will dismiss our precious ones, our, our kids, Revision Kids staff is ready. They have curated a an amazing experience for your children. So parents, guardians, we ask that you would now just quickly um, just bring your kids. Don't send them, but accompany them. Amen. Um, because we want you, you got to register so we know who belongs to who. So if you just take them back, it'll take just a minute or two and then come back and join us for the rest of our worship experience today. All of our guardians and parents, yes, we're accompanying them now. Well, today, today we're grateful that we have a great preacher in the house, one of my close friends, one who is a powerful, powerful preacher of the gospel of Jesus Christ, Dr. Jamie Calazar. We're welcoming you back to Revision Church Atlanta. It's been, I think, three years. We've been operating for five uh, uh, five years, and you've been with us, I think, about three times. So welcome back as you have come once during the pandemic, and uh, we're grateful. Uh, Dr. Calazar and his amazing uh, wife, uh, Carlene Calazar, is here. Carlene, just wave your hands. 
They are an amazing ministry couple as they are coming to us from Dallas, Texas, by way of Brooklyn, New York. Any Brooklynites in the house? Um, yeah, a few, a few. Uh, Dr. Jamie Calazar is one who is gifted uh, with the amazing gift of prophetic preaching. Uh, this prophetic preaching challenges uh, the systems of exploitation, marginalization, and all those systems that would seek to oppress our people. And he does this uh, in understanding that the gospel is indeed about liberation. Not just liberation from sin, but liberation from all kinds of evil that seek to stop human flourishing and allowing us to live our very best lives. That's my kind of preaching. And that's why he's here today. And so we are so grateful, Dr. Calazar, that you come and be with us to preach the gospel. We're grateful that you took some time away from your churches, your nonprofits, your ministry. He does so much to come and to be with us today. After the praise team leads us in worship, and we want everybody to join us in worship in the building online. After that, we will hear the voice of the man of God for this hour, Dr. Jamie Calazar. Okay, we get into it. We're going to get some praise and worship going on. Who is in, excited to be in the house of the Lord today? I mean, all of heaven just had a celebration because of the lives that dedicated. We got to stand to our feet and give God some glory and some praise because he's great. So if you know this song, please join in with us.
said, how great, said, how great, how great, how great, how great, said, how great, how great, how great, we serve a great God, we serve a mighty God, how great, yeah, 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 biggest praises, come on, how great. Today we're going to focus on the greatness of God. Sometimes we just got to say, God, you're great. As I go about my day, God, you're great. Something crosses me, God, you're great. You take something away from me. You give me something. You heal my family. You came down and spared your own life for my sins. That's a great God. Climbed to the highest mountain, looked all around, couldn't find nobody. I went down into the deepest valley, Round down there, couldn't find nobody. I went across the deep blue sea, couldn't find one to compare to your grace, your love, your mercy. Nobody greater, nobody greater than you.
Give God some glory and praise. Because if it wasn't for him, you wouldn't be here today. And even though that thing that's in front of you is, is trying to throw you off, let me tell you something. I serve a great God. I don't know about you, but my God is great. And all I got to do is just say the name Jesus. Just say the name Jesus over my situation. Speak the name Jesus over my family. Speak the name of Jesus over my, my purpose, my future. Speak the name of Jesus over the body of Christ, the things that are happening in the world. So we're going to just take a few seconds here just to give God some glory and praise in your own time. This is worship here. This is worship. We're worshiping you, Father God. Father God, we want our worship to be a sweet aroma. Thank you, Jesus. Good morning. Bless the Lord in this house right now. I just want to know if there's anybody in here grateful to be in the land of the living today. Grateful that God woke you up this morning. Grateful that he put something inside your stomach. Grateful that he put a little change in your pocket. Is there anybody in here today that wants to testify that I'm grateful that I serve a God that is risen and is in this world today? A God who the tomb could not hold. Buddha is in his tomb. Confucius is in his tomb. Muhammad is in his tomb. But I know Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior, is alive, and he is in this house today. And so we bless the name of the Lord. It's good to be back in revision. I think the song goes, it's good to go where everybody knows your name, and they're always glad you came. And so being back at revision, it is a blessed moment, a blessed time. It's always good to be with my brother from another mother, uh, Dr. Wesley Knight. Wherever we go, me and World Wide West, we make a worldwide mess. And so we thank God for his, for his, uh, for just his ministry and for his beautiful bride, Stephanie. We thank God for her. And it's also good to have Dr. Myron Edmonds in the building this morning too. Anointed and gifted preacher. I want to thank God for the pastoral staff, Pastor Jordan, Pastor Tiffany, Pastor Gina. I want to thank God for the praise team. I want to thank God for revision. Um, I mean, one of the good things is that you are a church that is moving. You are not stagnant and that you are doing the work of God and you are crafting the blueprint of how ministry should look in this uh, yet to be United States of America uh, because we need the church. We need a church 
that will continue to be on the front lines for justice. We need a church. We need a place of worship where people will stand up and proclaim the goodness of God. We don't need political pulpit punks to get up out right here and to not speak truth to power. So I thank God that your pastor is not a political pulpit punk who will not call out sin by its right name. And so whenever he calls, I will drop whatever I'm doing so that I could be here to fellowship with you, revision, um, and just for his goodness and his mercy. So I'm not going to take too much time. I believe that it's important to get right into the word of God. And so if you will, let's take our Bibles, our swords, however, whichever device you are using. We're going to go to the book of Matthew chapter 8. And I'm actually going to read verses 14. And I think I made me add a little bit extra as well. And so it's a tradition if you stand while we read the word of God, then I'm going to ask you to do so. Amen. Matthew 8, 14. When Jesus entered Peter's house, he saw his mother-in-law lying in bed with a fever. He touched her hand and the fever left her. And she got up and began to serve him. When the evening was come, they brought unto him many that were possessed with devils. And he cast out the spirits with his word. And he healed all that were sick, that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken by the prophet Isaiah, saying, he took our infirmities and bare our sickness. I want to put a tag on this text and simply entitle it, I'm waiting on standby waiting on standby. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for your goodness, your mercy, and your grace. Now, Lord, as we look at your word, I pray that you may hide me and that you be lifted up. Let the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. Oh, Lord, our strength and our redeemer. And everybody said, amen. You may be seated in the house of the Lord. Amen. Waiting can get on your last nerve. Particularly, too, when you do everything that you can to get out your house, to make it to wherever you are trying to go, and then suddenly you are stuck in a traffic jam. Do I have a witness in here today that waiting can get on your last nerve? Have you ever made an appointment to the doctor's office? You show up on time only to find out that you have to wait until it is time for you to be seen. Somebody knows that waiting can get on your last nerve. I'll never forget when I was on a flight on the way back from Dayton, Ohio to Dallas, Texas, I had a friend that works for uh, the airline. And so at the airline, he says, because you are a friend of mine, I will put you on the standby list. And so you know what I do. I say, hey, if it's a free ride, I'm going to take that thing. And so I get to the airport early, only to discover that I'm number three on the standby list. And so I'm sitting there waiting for me to get my name called so that I can get on this flight to get back home. It's 10 a.m. in the morning, but I'm there early because I know I'm on standby. And so I hope that I can get on this flight. I go to the uh, ticket clerk, the clerk that is at the desk, and I say, ma'am, is there any chance that I'll be able to get on this flight? She says, sir, I'm doing the best that I can to make sure that you could get on this flight, but you just got to wait your turn until I call your name. And so as time is going, they are doing the boarding process. I'm still waiting for my name to be called, but check this out, y'all. There are another group of people who are on standby as well, and they are getting bumped up to get on the flight while I got to stand back and wait. So I go back again. I asked her, I said, will I be able to get on this flight? She says, sir, I'm doing the best I can. It's a full flight, but we have what's called A-list preferred members. And because they are A-list, they get bumped up before everybody else to get on the flight. And so y'all, I'm tripping, I'm bugging. I'm going to park here parenthetically because it says to me that in this world, this yet to be United States of America, that they are A-list preferred citizens that get to bump up before other people so that they got to stand back and wait. Y'all ain't feel me like I need you to. A-list preferred people walk around with privilege and they think that it's okay to storm the Capitol and not have to worry about what's going on. A-list preferred members will have
will have access to things that we don't have access to. And so, y'all, I'm standing there. It's 10 a.m. I can't get on the flight. I have to wait. And so I asked the lady, will I be able to get on another flight? She says, sir, the next flight ain't going to be ready until 3.30 p.m. Y'all, my life is messed up. And I'm going to park here again parenthetically because have you ever waited and wanted something but it was not given to you because of your status or where you are in life? Somebody in here is feeling me like you need to because I'm sitting there wondering, will I ever get to get back home? My life is messed up. Y'all ain't feeling me like I need you to because every now and then I know you can relate to this song. This is a story all about how my life got twist turned upside down. Thank you. Somebody in here used to watch Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. But you could look at your life and say, now my life is twist turned upside down. And life can be like that sometimes. This thing called life can be unfair. Life can be downright unjust and unreasonable. Life will have you questioning yourself and wondering if the favor of God is on my life. Have you ever had to wait on standby? as you sit back and watch others get by. Because here's what's happening. Them folk were getting on the plane and they could care less about my predicament. As long as they got their seat, they were fine. And I said to myself that every now and then that we have to sit back and watch others get by while you got to get back. What does it mean to live on standby? Standby simply means to wait on a space to open up for you. If you are on standby, it is basically means that whatever you are trying to get or get in on is full and you got to be on the list. Standby of life will have you singing that song once again. This is a story all about how my life got twist turned upside down. Standby. I guess in these yet to be United States of America, every now and then we feel like we living in standby. Our communities are in standby as others get redeveloped. It's crazy to me that five little numbers will determine the length of your life. Standby for the thousands of immigrants that are in detention centers separated from their families, living in standby as Palestinians have to watch their land seized and taken from racist Israeli Zionists. Standby as we watch the moral fabric of our society fall apart before our very eyes. Standby as we sit in here watching a criminal who got over 95 criminal indictments and is the Republican nominee for the highest office in this country. Somebody make it make sense waiting can get on your last nerve because while you wait you try to put the pieces of your life back together because waiting and standby could be full of confusing contradictions I mean one day you up and the next day you down. What happens when you got more month than money? What happens when you trying to make a dollar out of 15 cents? What happens when you are agonizing over your next meal where it would come from? What happens when you are wondering how I'm going to feed these kids and keep the lights on? What happens when I got to make a move and I ain't got enough to make that move? I don't know what to go. You are waiting on standby and I stand here to ask the question in your walk with Jesus have you ever felt like you were on standby? That you on some waiting list for your name to be called. Are you watching other people get blessed? You watching other people's doors get open for them? You watching other people get healed. And I mean, if you could, if you were God, you would open up a window and bless you right now. But you are waiting for God to do something in your life. I'm preaching to somebody here today. Can I talk about Peter for a little bit? Here is Peter. Just put on your holy lenses and understand where I'm coming from. Peter is now a disciple of Jesus Christ. Peter is rolling with the big baller and shot caller of the universe, our Lord, leader, and liberator, the Palestinian prince, the HNIC, head Nazarene in charge, Jesus the Christ. He is now one of his disciples digging on the scene. Peter is walking with Jesus and his mother-in-law is at home with a fever. 
The original language does not define this as some low-grade fever. This isn't a common cold or sniffles. No, this fever is severe. It's severe. It has handcuffed her to her bed, and one can only imagine how ill she was. Her fever was associated with the risk of dying as well as being impure. No one can touch her. Who knows why she is sick? Perhaps her medication was too expensive to purchase, or maybe the administration was doing all they can do to repeal and reverse her coverage, or perhaps the doctor and treat her because she had a pre-existing condition, but she is on her bed and she's sick. And for Peter, this has to be gut-wrenching because not only is his mother sick, but he also runs the risk of embarrassment that the Savior and his friends might stop by at his house and there are no food and drinks to give to them. And that's messed up because here is Peter because not only that, but Peter is walking with Jesus, and he is going everywhere with Jesus, and he's got hurt in his house. I mean, just look at the book of Matthew. We in chapter 8. Let's go back to chapter 4. Jesus steps on the boat with Simon Peter and his brother Andrew. They are vowed to, they are wild by the Savior. Matthew doesn't go into it, but Luke tells us that they had caught nothing all night. Jesus steps on the boat. He says, Peter, cast your net into the water. Peter, being defiant, decides that he needs to tell Jesus, we have toiled all night and caught nothing. There are no fish here. Peter is probably right because Peter knows that fishing at night is better than fishing in the morning because the fish go to the bottom and the fish don't rise up and so Peter is basically telling Jesus you a preacher man I'm a fisherman don't tell me how to do my job while the fish are in the sea saying Peter where is the net our master is calling us because we have been called by him may I park here parenthetically and tell you that I don't care how crazy how outlandish how outside of your thinking your request may be but as long as Jesus tells you to cast out into the deep you better shut up and do it all right so Peter calls him and keep on reading Matthew 4 23 25 the word says that Jesus goes on a preaching and healing campaign the Bible says that Jesus was healing all kinds of diseases his fame was all in the street folks from all over the world from all over the town brought their sick demon possessed epileptics paralytics and they healed them stood on a mountain preaches one of the most famous favorable and best sermons that the world has ever known as we know as the Beatitudes and then we come to chapter 8. He cleanses a leper and heals a Roman centurion servant daughter and don't miss this. The Romans were oppressors to the children of Israel but Jesus still goes to an oppressor's house and heals his daughter and now we are see while Peter is following Jesus his mother-in-law is sick at home. Peter has to stand there and watch healing after healing, deliverance after deliverance, cure after cure, and he's on standby. I mean, what if you were Peter? I'm walking with the one who can heal all sickness. He doesn't even have to come to my house, but he could just speak a word and heal the one that I love so much. And don't tell me that Jesus did not know because this is the same man who walked up on Nathaniel and said, can anything good come from Nazareth? He knows that his mother is sick. So Jesus knows. And Peter got to stand there, work with him, perform his duties, learn from him as he hopes and prays that one day Jesus will stop by my house. Am I talking to somebody this afternoon? Am I talking to somebody who's just waiting and working and hoping that Jesus will stop by your house today? Are you just saying, God, come to my house. Jesus, come to the hospital. I got a family member that is grievously stricken with a sickness. All Jesus, all you have to do is come. As a matter of fact, Jesus, all you got to do is say your word. Is there somebody who is sitting here today and is wondering and questioning and saying, God, as I watched them Palestinian people being bombed, you are the God of yesterday, today, and forever. Evermore, you mean Jesus, you can't do something. You mean Jesus, as I look at how black and brown people are treated in this country, God, you can't do nothing. I just got to watch the news and bear with this. I am on standby, not just standby in the world, but standby in my own life. 
just do something, God. I mean, maybe you don't, you don't have no sick or broken people in your life, but maybe perhaps you the sick or broken person. And you on standby. You just waiting and hoping that God will do something in your life while you are working. Because I mean the audacity of Jesus to call Peter while there's trouble in his house. Not only that, it is common knowledge that Peter was probably a newlywed and it was standard that the mother-in-law lives with the couple. So not only is Jesus pulling them away from his mother-in-law, Jesus is pulling them away from tradition and norms because the text is telling us that Jesus not only called the man away from his livelihood and his fresh new marriage to be his disciple, but he must watch and look at Jesus, he'll person after person. Peter got to watch from chapter 4 to chapter 8 that all the the celebration and joy that these people are having and my mother is sick. May I suggest to us this afternoon that although God knows and sees all the things that just because you have troubles in your home and in your life that God will still put you on a divine assignment to do his work. May I suggest to you this afternoon that perhaps Jesus was calling Peter to teach him something about patience. Perhaps Jesus was taking Peter through a process of redeveloping and building a new in him so that it could prepare him for the big moments in his life. Perhaps Perhaps Jesus is teaching Peter a lesson because you do know and understand that in the musical world that there is something called a discordant note, a diminished chord. And a skilled composer would insert a diminished chord into a musical piece that does not fit into the music. It does not sound good. It is clashing. It sounds terrible. But the reason why the musician does that is because he does not want the listener to get accustomed to hearing good music all the time. And so they insert insert a discordant note to wake the listener up to tell them that music won't always be good but at every now and then that he inserts that chord into their life. May I preach this afternoon to suggest that if God is the composer of our life that God inserts hard clashing discordant notes into the walk with Jesus to remind you that just because you serve God life ain't always gonna be easy. But it's what you do with your diminished chord will explain how you will see the rest. Because the diminished chord, what some people do is they turn the music off because they don't like what they hear. But can you sit through a diminished chord experience and still say, for God, I will continue to live and do his will and way? Uh, because Peter... Before you could walk on water, you got to learn how to weigh. Peter, before you could take the coin out the mouth of a fish, you must learn how to weigh. Peter, before you could go on Mount Transfiguration, you must learn how to trust me. There are some things I need you to do, Peter. But Peter, you got to go through the school of hard knocks with me. May I suggest that Peter passed his divine assignment. Peter didn't give up or walk out, but Peter stayed focused and followed Jesus and did not take his eyes off him. Peter, do you understand that I am forming you and molding you to understand that your faith is being tried as you wait and watch as your mother-in-law is on your mind? Can you stay on divine assignment? And I know for a good majority of us, you're physically here, but your mind is at home. You are physically praising and worshiping God but your brain is elsewhere trying to face it with a broken spirit. And I know this may sound strange, but you got to keep on keeping on, keep it together, keep it tight, keep it right, but stay on your divine assignment, stay on track and keep on doing what God is telling you to do. Don't relinquish your position, don't hand in your retirement, don't leave God's side, don't stop praying, stop worshiping, don't drop out, don't stop reading the word, don't start calling on his name, but use those moments as opportunities to get closer to Jesus. Stay on divine assignment. I remember when I was younger, uh, Dr. Bedmans, that when we would go to Great Adventure or Six Flags, you would know it as, but if you're on the East Coast, you call it Great Adventure. And we had this agreement with my friends that whenever we would go on a roller coaster, we would sit in the front car. But here's what the agreement was, was that when you were on the front car, you had to put your hands up. You couldn't sit there without putting your hands up. But here's the thing about it. We didn't put our hands up while the roller coaster was going 
going up. We had to raise our hands while the roller coaster was going down. And I stand by here to ask you, can you raise your hands when you feel like you are going down? Oh. Why did we raise our hands? We raised our hands because we had an apparatus that was holding us down. And so we knew that no matter if the roller coaster went up or if it went down, something was going to hold me down. I wish I had a church in this building right now. If you got faith that God's going to hold you down. That's what I need, Peter. I need you, Peter, to trust me while you're going down. Peter got to wake up every day and go to work. And that's all I'm saying to somebody in here today. Can you trust God when it feels like you are going down, when you ain't got no money, when you ain't got no friends, when your husband, your spouse, people walk out on you? Can you stay on divine assignment? Ah. Uh. Oh, your work should be the same. Your worship should be the same. Your praise should be the same. Them songs you sing when you are doing good ought to be the same songs when your life turns and twists upside down. Don't claim God only through a good season, but sing when peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll. Whatever my lot thou hast taught me to say, it is well, it is well, it is well with my soul. Because ain't no drink going to get you through this. No smoke ain't going to get you through this. No booty call ain't going to get you through this. You got to be grounded to stay on assignment. So the text informs us that Jesus finally makes it to Peter's house. And upon arrival at Peter's house, Jesus sees that his mother-in-law is sick on the bed. He's on bed with a fever. And when you read the other healings that Jesus performed, you will discover that the folks brought their sick and lame to Jesus Christ. But in this story, Jesus stops at Peter's house. Peter did not prompt him. Peter did not ask him. Peter, the reason why that Jesus stopped there is because it's recorded in the book that's also that this is the first woman that Jesus ever heals. And so what we must understand, and I love this part of the text, is that Jesus don't always got to be prompted and told to deliver you. That there are times when Jesus will show up and just bless you and will heal you, when he will open up a door that you have not even prayed for or that you are crying out. Do I have any help this afternoon? Can you testify when that God allowed that car to swerve out of your way, when you got that check that showed up in the mail, when somebody just blessed you with something that you didn't have before? God is so good that he knows the desires of your heart. You don't even got to ask for it. And blessings come your way. Oh, I'm preaching to somebody here. The Bible says that Jesus stops at Peter's house. He says when he arrived at Peter's house, his mother-in-law was sick. And I love this. I still like the KJV version. He says he saw Peter's mother. Ain't it good to know that Jesus sees us, that Jesus acknowledges us, that God still knows what you are going through, that Peter is not only on standby because Jesus is also on standby as well. Because I discovered that standby has two meanings. It also means readiness for duty, immediate deployment. And so even while Jesus was on standby, he was ready to heal him and to heal Peter's mother-in-law. That's what happened in the story. And so I got to get up out your face, but y'all sitting there, y'all tripping, y'all wondering what in the heck happened to, excuse me, sometimes I'll be speaking in an unknown tongue. Please forgive me. What happened to you while you were waiting for your flight? Well, it turns out that I had to wait on the flight. I couldn't get on the 10 a.m flight. I had to wait until 3.30. So I'm sitting in the airport for all those hours. But y'all probably missed this in the first part when I was telling the story that I had a buddy that put me on the wait list. And so my buddy is texting me and he's telling me, don't leave the airport. Just stay where you are. You're going to get on this next flight. He is sending me text messages and telling me to wait. Don't leave. Just wait for the flight. You're going to get on this flight. He says, you got to understand this. I can't see my friend, but my friend sees me where I am because he has a computer that analyzes all the seats on the plane so he knows that it's empty. Ah, y'all miss y'all shout cue. I said, 
He can't see me. I can't see him, but he knows exactly where I am. Don't we serve a God that sees us and knows where we are, and he sends us text messages to tell us to wait in the season that we are in? Can I give you some of his text messages? They that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Trust in the Lord your God with all your heart and lean not unto your own understanding. You got to read his text messages. But hold up, y'all. It gets good or wait. That ain't even it yet. And so here it is. The lady calls my name. I get my seat on the flight. She prints out my ticket. I am walking on the plane and I'm walking towards the back of the plane. I'm looking up for my seat. I don't know where my seat is. The flight attendant says, sir, can I help you? I said, yeah, I'm looking for my seat. My seat is 3B. She says, sir, you are in coach with a first class ticket. Oh, hold up, hold up. This ain't even in the sermon because when you don't stay on divine assignment and you miss what God is telling you, you will be walking around this world with a coach mentality when you're already a first class person. Oh, oh hold up. And so here it is, y'all. Waiting has its benefits. I'm sitting on the front of the plane. I'm eating cheese and crackers, y'all. I got porcelain plates in front of me. I feel mighty good. Why? Because sometimes you got to wait for your blessing. And can I bless you that if you just wait long enough and watch what God will do and stand by, look at how God will turn a situation around. Don't give up. Don't walk out. Just stay in the new thing. Look how God builds a new thing, builds a new you, builds a new outlook before I know the thoughts that I think towards you, thoughts to give you hope, a future and an expected end. Somebody ought to testify and say, thank you, Jesus. And so Jesus like, ain't no way I'm going to come to this house and let this woman stay here sick. The Bible says that he healed her. The Bible says that she got up and she started serving her. She touched her hand. Thank God that God will touch our hands and the fever will lift us. That the woman got up and she started making some hot water cornbread, some greens, some peach cobbler, some mac and cheese, some fried okra, some gumbo, some pecan pie, some lemonade, and some good red Kool-Aid. The Bible says that she started preparing food food for her in so much that God took that house of sickness and turned it into a house of healing that the Bible says all manner of people came and they were blessed all because Peter stayed on divine assignment and all I gotta say revision is stay on your assignment don't let nothing take you out don't let nothing throw you down don't let nobody tell you otherwise don't let nobody say that it's not worth serving Jesus Stay in the will of God. Uh. It's on standby that God turns things around. I'm going to bless you real quick as we get ready to close this out. Brokenness, hurting, pain sorrow. God, you doing it for everybody else. When's my turn? I need you right now. There's a palace in Tehran, Iran. It's a beautiful structure. And when you walk inside of the palace, you are underneath this glass structure. It's amazing. It's like one of the most amazing things in the world. They said that when they were building this palace, that the architect ordered glass from France to be shipped to Iran. When the glass arrived, it was broken. So the contractor decided to throw the broken glass away, throw it in the garbage. Architect comes and says, where's the glass that I ordered from France? The contractor said, we threw it away because it came broken, so we need to find another uh, distributor for the glass. Architect said, no, bring that glass here. I'm going to do something with it. The story is that he took a hammer and ordered everybody to break the glass up even more. 
and then they glued it together in the palace so that when you walk inside, it doesn't just look like glasses looking down on you, it looks like diamonds that are shining down. I share this story because I know an architect who takes the broken pieces of your life, who will not throw them away, but he can take brokenness and turn it into something brand new that when you stand up and he shows you off, you don't look like what you have been through, that he will glue your life together, that when you walk people past you, they would not have known all the brokenness you have been through, but once he puts you back together, no one would have known that you have been broken. So I need to make an appeal to somebody here today. There is somebody here who's having trouble staying on your divine assignment. It is hard, and waiting is getting on your last nerve. You waiting for a job. You are waiting for a healing. You are waiting for a breakthrough. You are broken, and you need the architect to glue you back together. Is there somebody in here today that wants to stand up and say, Pastor, pray for me? Because I feel like throwing in this towel. I mean, all this stuff that's coming at me, it's getting harder and harder every day to stay in your will. As I'm watching other people testify about how good you are, God, and what you've done for them. But this one thing I learned about our Savior is God don't save you from the fire. He saves you while you in the fire. God don't save you from the storm. He saves you while you in the storm. But don't jump out the ship. Don't resist what God is calling you. Because even though you may feel like you on standby, God is ready to do something for you. I'm going to ask the man of God, your pastor, to come up and pray over his, over his flock. God bless you, man of God. If you're standing in the need of prayer today in a special way, you're saying, Lord, I'm dealing with some brokenness and I need, I need you to do to take my brokenness and make it better. I need you to pull me together. I, I, I need you. Just meet me at the altar. I want to pray for you today. There's some areas of brokenness that are tempting you to get off the standby list. You're saying, Lord, I, I, I'm tempted to take matters into my own hands. I'm, I'm waiting to get in to that program. I'm, I'm waiting for you to turn this relationship around. I'm I'm waiting for perhaps my children to make better decisions. I'm, I'm waiting for a good report from the doctor. And I need grace to trust you more. Oh, hallelujah today. We believe God is able. We believe God is able. Yeah, you're still coming. Praise God. All of those who have pressed through the aisles and to the altar, even online. We haven't forgotten about you. Just, just put up the prayer emoji. I, I need, I need God to do it for me. Just drop the prayer emoji in the chat. We want to partner in prayer with you. Let's believe God today. Oh God, we thank you for this story that gives us hope to know that while we are waiting, you know our situation. You have not forgotten about us. And like Peter, although we may have to wait, Lord, we know that when you decide, you will do more than we could either, even dream, ask, think, or desire. So God, right now for those who are in this space and those at the virtual altar, Lord, whatever it is, I don't know their names, but you do. Lord, whatever it is, I don't know their situation, but you do. God, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, you will give them patience in their spirit 
to wait on you, to trust that you will do more than you even promised, to trust, God, that you will do exceedingly and abundantly. Let them not be weary in well-doing, but in due season, God. Help them to know they will reap. And God, I just pray, I just believe that it's going to be better than what they ever imagined. God, I just believe that it's going to blow their mind. God, I just believe that you are going to exceed expectation because you are a great God. And so, God, we thank you in advance for the deliverance, for the healing, for the, the blessing, for the provision, for the protection, for the turnaround, for, for everything you are going to do. But help us to wait for due season. God, we don't know when our due season is, but we trust that you can keep us until that day. And when we walk into that season, God, please help us to be careful to give you the glory. Help us to not forget from whence our blessings come from and to give you praise for what you've done and not just give you praise, but tell somebody else about the great God that we serve. We thank you in advance for what you are about to do. In Jesus' name, let everybody who's excited in anticipation and expectation, come on, put your hands together and bless God today. We believe him. We believe he is more. Hallelujah, more. More than able. Today, we'll put up the QR code for those who need to make decisions for Jesus. Today, if you need to make a decision for Jesus, today, if you want to, you say, I'm already a Christian, but I'm not a member of any church, you can use the QR code today. Just grab your device. Those of you online, you can do the same thing. You can be able to fill out the forms as so many have done before saying, listen, I want to be baptized in the next baptism. I want to give my life to Jesus Christ. Or I want to be a member of Revision Church Atlanta. I want to grow with a community who loves Jesus and who is serving Jesus. Today you're saying, you know, I, I, I may not use the QR code, but I still want to join the church or give my life to Jesus. After service, two pastors will be down here at the altar to meet you, to get your names, and to facilitate your decision today as Revision joins with you in your walk Jesus Christ. We heard the word of the Lord today. Would you put your hands together if you were blessed? Come on, come on. What an amazing word. We praise God for you. Thank you so much, Dr. Kalazar, for the word today. So many of us are waiting on God to do some stuff, and we praise God for this word that gives us courage, that gives us hope, that's speaking patience and trust and faith into our lives. May God continue to bless you and bless Carleen. Listen, I just want to... Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Dr. Kalazar, Carleen, would you... Just stand, just stand, hold each other's hand, face the congregation. I want to pray over you. Stephanie, just lay hands. Dr. Edmonds, lay hands on them. I want to pray over them a special prayer. I mentioned last week on our sermon about giving that oftentimes we do not understand the weight that pastors carry. These are deep and close friends of ours, and we just want to pray God's anointing over them in this season. Would you stretch your hands towards them? Because what you saw, it looked easy, but it wasn't easy to preach today. God, in the name of Jesus, Father, we thank you. Mm. We thank you for what you have done today through Pastor Jamie and what you continue to do in the life of his 
lovely wife, Carlene. But God, Lord God, in this season, we pray, God, that you would strengthen them so that they will be able to continue as they wait on standby to know what it is that you have in the next season. God, we pray that where they have wounds, you will heal. God, we pray that when people walked away, you will send the right people to replace them. And God, I'm praying now in the name of Jesus as we stretch our hands towards them that you will give them favor that is beyond belief. Not just in this church. This denomination is too small. God, that you will give them favor in the world. For you have great gifts in both Jamie and Carlene. So God, for their nonprofit, God, for the school, God, for all their dreams, God, over their children, Caitlin and Amber, I pray divine favor over them. Everything they touch, God, may it bring you glory and may it succeed. And when they are tired, God, give them strength. We thank you for what's going to happen in this next season. From Atlanta, we will watch and wonder what a great God you are. And we thank you in Jesus' name. It shall be done. Somebody shout amen. Amen. Come on, put your hands together and bless God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm, hallelujah. Listen, we're almost through. We're almost through, but as he was preaching, the Spirit of God told me to do something before, before in the service that I forgot to do, and in the sermon he reminded me, and that is whenever we gather to pray, whenever we gather to praise, whenever we gather to hear the Word of God, Bible says Jesus rebuked the people in the temple, not just because they were exploiting poor people, that was part of it, but secondly, because in their exploitation, they forgot, he says, this is a house of prayer. And that we don't just come to pray for what we need. God knows what we need. But we also call on the name of the Lord for other people who are struggling who are hurting. This week I heard, the number blew my mind, 14,000 children in Gaza have been killed. 14,000. And I heard that, I think it was on NPR because it's, we've been so busy in this country focusing on that former president's court trials that we haven't even noticed that 14,000 children in Gaza, not counting the mothers and fathers, have been killed. We have to stand in the gap. So I, I want you to do this for me if you would. Would you, would you just raise your hands in prayer and let's touch and agree to pray for the families for those precious people in Gaza who are suffering. We understand that there's suffering on both sides. We understand that, but it is shameful what is happening to the Palestinian people in Gaza. So yes, we want hostages free, but we also want the bombing to stop, a ceasefire. Father God, we thank you that you hear every prayer. Now, God, we're not praying for our deliverance. We're not praying for our healing. We're not praying for anything we need. Lord, we're praying for those who are suffering right now while we worship. God, for the 14,000 plus number of children who are now gone, whose bodies strewn the streets of Gaza, God, we pray for a ceasefire. We pray, Lord, that the evil machinations of men will not win, but that your spirit of peace will hover over that place. The same streets you walked. God, we pray that you will now bring peace. God, 
bring peace, give wisdom and knowledge and revelation to the leaders. God, may politics not rule the day, but may mercy and grace. God, I pray that you will comfort those who are still hurting today, who are still grieving today. And we pray, God, for peace in the place where you walked. Heal and deliver those individuals, God, so that they might know that the Prince of Peace still can bring peace in the Middle East. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you believe God has spoken today, come on, put your hands together. Hallelujah. We praise God today for the opportunity to hear the word and to be blessed by the word. I pray that we will not just be hearers of the word, but doers of the word. Wait on your standby. Stay on your divine assignment. God's going to do it in due season. Turn to your neighbor and say, he's going to do it in due season. He's going to do it. He's going to do it. Amen. Amen. Listen, we got just a couple more things before we, we go. I know Pastor Gina is going to be ready in just a minute. Um, I want to recognize and uh, welcome to the city of Atlanta uh, a great friend of mine, Dr. Myron Edmonds. And welcome to the Fellowship of Revision Church Atlanta. <laughs> we are grateful. Next time you come, bring your lovely wife, Shanae. When your kids are in town, our newest members of Revision Church Atlanta, Dr. Myron Edmonds, <laughs> good friend of ours, and a great, powerful, powerful preacher of the Word. Um, and so he's going to be preaching for us sometime later this year. Amen. He just found that out. He just found that out. All right, we're going to celebrate our baptismal candidates, those who have, uh, well, it's actually our new members. They're not candidates anymore. And so um, we're going to um, have them, if they, um, where are they, they're not seated here, they're seated with their families. Would you just come to the front real quick one more time, one more time so we can give you your gifts. There we go. Imani, Chloe. All right, let's, we want to make sure that you receive these wonderful gifts. There you go. In every gift bag, we have your baptismal certificate so that you can remember this day, commemorate this day, and we're grateful for you. We also have some gifts, some goodies in there for you. To all of your families, respective families, we love you, and uh, you've done a great job raising um, these young people. Listen, church, we got cake. Every time we have baptism, we like to celebrate, so we got cake for everybody. But we want to make sure the baptismal, uh, can, uh, the, the new members and their families get, get some first. Because, you know, y'all run out there and get all the cake. And then the people that's four, you know, they ain't got nothing left. All right, okay, I won't call, call y'all out, please. So, so, newest members, those who are baptized today, y'all head to the back right now, family. Um, make sure that you're in place. While you get a slice of cake, make sure you give them a hug, right? recognize them, celebrate them, and we're grateful for what they do. Pastor, would you come give us our announcements and remind us of our in-person giving? Yes, in addition to celebrating those who are baptized today, we are also celebrating graduates. So anyone in the class of 2024, we want to celebrate you. If you haven't signed up, you want to make sure you give us uh, your school name, uh, what you're graduating from, whether it's preschool, high school. We want to know uh, all those who are graduating here. And we're also going to be taking pictures of our graduates. So in the first room to your left down this hall, we'll be taking your picture. So please stop by. We also want to remind you that this evening, this evening at seven, we have our family fun event that is Beat the Buzzer, amen? We clap up for that. We'll be having fun as a church family, so this is an event for young adults, for older adults, even for the little kids. You wanna come out and let's just have fun together. 
And we also want to remind you that coming up in May, we'll be having another community event. Last week, we had a voter education forum for our community. And next month, we'll be having a mental health awareness uh, event. We can say amen to that. So we just want to put it on your radar so that you know you can share with your friends, share with your family, your barber, your hairstylist, anyone. And let them know that we'll also be having a raffle to give away free counseling. And someone say amen. amen. Free counseling sessions from BetterHelp. So you want to make sure you'll, you'll be there May 11th. And lastly, next week, we'll be having Selah. We won't be in person, but we'll be uh, having our Selah experience. So if you have questions about that, you're wondering, what is Selah? How can I be a part of that? We'll meet you right out in the lobby. There's a big sign, and you can get more information there. And that is all our announcements. We thank you for always giving here at Revision. And there are ways to give online. But also, as you're walking out, you'll see some bins. If you have cash, you want to put your tithe and offering in there, you can do so. Thank you, Pastor Gina. Yes, as Pastor Gina just mentioned, those of you guests, visitors, many of our members, most of our members, you give systematically, you give regularly online, that's how you do it. You don't need to change that. But for those of you who are here today, you say, listen, I'd like to give, I'd like to uh, continue to contribute to the strength of this church, you can do that on the way out. We have blue offering bins at each door. The envelopes are there. Just fill that out briefly. Put your check in there or your cash, and we will receive that with gladness. Would you stand to your feet now as we leave this place with our closing prayer? Dr. Calazar, his lovely wife, Carleen, will be down front. You can come down and just say hello to him and let him know how you were so blessed today. God, we thank you for the word that we've heard, for your spirit that we felt. We thank you, oh God, for the hope that now springs within us as we now leave this place. May we be lights in a dark world. May people know that Jesus lives because they see the way we live. We thank you. We love you. We cannot wait to see you in Jesus' name. Let everybody shout amen, amen. and amen. We will see you not next week in person but the week after that. We hope that you'll join us for Selah. You can sign up for our Selah house groups uh, right outside at the Selah sign, you can sign up to be part of our amazing Selah experience. God bless you.